Okay, so this problem is going to look at a number of different forces acting on this system here. So what we have is a baby in a sling. We're just going to call that the baby. We'll include the sling as part of it. Being weighed by a spring scale, which is attached to the ceiling. And the first question in this problem says, consider the baby being weighed. What is the mass of the child and the basket together if the scale reading is 55 newtons. So we want to remember how a spring scale works. With a spring scale, the tension in the rope attached to the scale is pulling down and reading that tension. So the reading on the spring scale, if we call this rope T1, that equals the reading on the scale, okay? That's how the spring scale works. All right, so for part A, our object is the baby. The baby and the sling. We're gonna call that just one, one object, the baby and the sling. So here's our picture, picture. So if we drew a free body diagram of that baby, well, first we should consider what the forces are. We can't forget that part. So what are the forces acting on this baby? We know that the baby is interacting with the earth. So we have the baby and the earth, and of course that's the weight. We also see that that baby sling is interacting with this rope that's attached to that spring scale. So we have tension one, we'll call that tension one, and that's between the baby and the rope. Now remember, tension one is given as the reading on the scale. So we know this is 55 newtons acting on that scale. All right, so if I were to draw a free body diagram of this situation, and we have the force of gravity, which we know is equal to mg, acting down on that baby, and we have the tension, which we know is equal to 55 newtons, acting up. Now I've drawn these two arrows similar size. Why would I do that? Well, we know this baby's just hanging out, not changing their motion up or down or right and left. They're just there in equilibrium. So the forces up and the forces down must also be equal if my acceleration is zero. Now there's no horizontal forces, so we're just going to look at these two forces in the vertical direction. And so we have force one and force two. Force one minus mg, it's pointing in that downward direction. And force two, we know is tension one, which is equal to that 55 degrees. Now the sum of the forces is equal to our mass times our acceleration vertically, but since this object is not changing their motion up or down, those are equal to zero. So we end up with minus mg plus 55 is equal to zero. If I bring mg over to the other side, we have 55 is equal to mg, and I can solve for my mass. So 55 is equal to m times 9.8, and the mass then is equal to 5.6 kilograms. So we're being asked for the mass. The mass is equal to 5.6 kilograms. Okay, so part two says, let me find part two. Um, what is the tension in the cord attaching the baby to the string? Well, we've already talked about that. That tension is the reading on the scale itself. So we could consider now the object being that rope. And if we think about the object being that rope, for this is for part B, this was part A. For part B, we could consider the object being the rope. And if I think about the tension in that rope, we have the baby down, the force of the baby, which is equal to the baby's weight, which we said was 55 newtons. And we have then that force upward. So this is the scale reading, which also has to equal 55 newtons. We were told that that equals 55 newtons. So the tension, T1, is equal to 55 newtons. 
So that's really our part B, that tension in the rope is equal to 55 newtons. And that's also, we want to think about how a spring scale works. It's reading the tension that that spring scale is at, and it reads the tension in the rope attached to the bottom of that scale as we've drawn it here. Okay, the part that's pulling down on the spring in that spring scale. So we knew that tension was 55 for part B. Well, part C then says, what about the tension in the rope above the scale? How do we determine the tension in the rope above the scale? Well, we might want to consider in this example then, in this part C, this is part B, we want to call our spring scale, in this case, the object. The scale itself, because the scale is what's interacting with that rope up top. So let's think about what the forces are acting on that scale. Well, we know that the scale is interacting with the Earth. The scale has a mass. That mass is given as 0 0.5 kilograms. So half of a kilogram is the mass of that scale. So it's interacting with the earth. The scale's also interacting with the rope below it, right? So tension one is between the scale and the rope. That same rope that's attached to the baby. Now the scale's not interacting with the baby. It's not touching the baby. The rope's touching the baby. And we determined what that tension was, intuited it, but we want to make sure we understand what that interaction is. The scale is also interacting with the rope above. So we have the scale and rope two, because it's touching that rope up top. Okay, so let's draw a free body diagram of on the scale. We have T1 acting down, it's pulling down on that scale. We have the force of gravity of the scale. It's also acting down. And then we have the tension in the rope that's acting up. So holding it to that ceiling, pulling up on it. So again, we only have vertical forces. So we're only going to look at the vertical components of the forces. There is nothing happening horizontally. So we have one, two, and three. Force number one is T1, it's in the negative direction, and we know that is 55 newtons. We've determined that, we intuited it in our part A, and we confirmed it in part B. Force number two, that's that upward force T2. We don't know what it is, but it is positive. That's what we're interested in this problem. And then force number three is in the negative direction pointing down, and we know that is minus mg. Now in this case it's the mass of the scale. That's the object that is interacting with the earth. So I can sum these and that's going to equal the mass times the sum in the vertical direction. Well the scale is just sitting there so this sum is of course zero. So if I add these up we have minus 55 plus t2 minus mg is equal to zero. And I'm interested in T2, so I'm going to bring these other two up over to the other side. So we have T2 is equal to 55 plus mg. And that, again, is the mass of the scale. So we have 55 plus 0.5 times 9.8. Getting close to the edge there. I can still see it, though, I think. And then if we solve for the tension in rope 2, we find that it is 59.9 newtons, or if we round that to 60 point newtons, because I have two significant figures in this problem. All right, so a little bit more tension in T2 than in T1. How come? Well, this rope is holding up this entire system which has the mass of the scale a part of it. So it should be a little higher than the rope that's just holding on to the baby. Okay, all right, so using sort of remembering our interactions, thinking about those interactions, recognizing what that spring scale does and how it operates, and then solving for our variables of interest. Good job.